Okay, this is Self. It's the world's first uh, neural synthesizer. Basically what it is, is a, a living human a neuron network growing in the white dish up there. And from that, there's uh, 60 electrodes that run from there out to the front panel. And this front panel is uh, uh, an analog interface that uh, lets us uh, uh, take the neural activity. You can see the little spikes of LEDs coming. Um, those spikes uh, show the activity of the neural network at the dish. From those uh, uh, spikes, we can send those spikes as triggers and envelopes to the modular synth, which Andrew built, and then uh, sent out to the speakers. Andrew's probably better uh, uh, explaining what, to, what happens in the, in the synthesizer side. Uh, mostly regular analog synth, I think. Um, most of it's been turned into nonlinear circuits products by now, so you can go and buy them if you want. <laughs> but we uh, we did this. These are one whole circuit board behind each of these ones. So we call this the voice board or the voice section, and it's more VCOs and low pass gates, uh, envelope generators, VCA and a reverb. There's a reverb tanks inside each of these, and this one, the action panel, is more. Uh, some logic circuits like dividers and boolean logic stuff and uh, quadrature oscillators so we can get good spatialization of the sounds as we send it around and then a few of the more sort of wacky modules a bit of flip-flop chaos and sloth chaos and um, dp filter delay no more just sort of more noisy jerky sort of violent modules i guess yeah but it is hard to um, convert the signals to uh, control voltages. We have, we have, we're using a, a scientific instrument it's called a multi-electrode array. They use it in science to actually produce uh, data on, in a computer sense. Basically, what it is, it's uh, these electrodes, 60 electrodes, uh, broken out and then run down this uh, cable, the grey cable you see at the back. Usually that is used with a computer and sent through a computer through software. But what Andrew has done, and he'll explain basically what it is, um, we've taken those 60 signal paths and uh, through his analog uh, um, uh, circuitry has uh, done exactly what the software has done, even better. So you can explain exactly <laughs> what, it, what, what, Hopefully these, it's better. what these um, things are. Yeah, basically the... What the neurons put out is what's called neuronal noise, and it's just like a constant noise signal. It's a little like white noise, but it's got a bit more variety. And then when they get excited, you have these pulses or triggers called action potentials. So we get the signals coming out of them, and um, each square on here has two outputs, and one's the neuronal noise, and that's just amplified up to about um, 10 volts peak to peak, like classic synth levels. And the knob is a, um, there's a comparator and that's where you, ha um, you have to tune the neur neuronal noise so you can find the action potential trigger. And that's where the trigger will be coming out, which is AP, action potential. So we use these triggers as timing devices for the synths. So we're not directly getting CV from the neurons. We're getting noise, which we use the noise as a sound source. And we're getting triggers, and we use that for timing to set, start off. All the, these are like all envelope generators here. And there's about another 12 of them up on each side as well. And... Um, so yeah, basically the neurons are triggering envelopes, and then we also use them on the clocking dividers, like the frequency divider and so logic these, modules. So these, these mm. 60 uh, outputs are also inputs, so we're able to um, uh, place uh, stimulation uh, triggers into it, just like uh, they would be producing on their own. So they're producing these little spikes and triggers that you see are there. Um, I don't know, what, how many millivolts are they at the... Uh, up inside the neurons from memory, it's about 5 millivolt, okay. and they're about 8 millisecond width trigger. So when we get signals like we'll be getting them from the piano tonight, they'll go into here and we've got circuit circuits to convert those signals into 5 millivolts and 8 millisecond, <laughs> exactly what the neurons want to see. Um, they can handle more. When we were testing, building this device, 
I think we fed them up to 10 volts yeah, yeah. or something to see how they could handle they, they it. They didn't fry completely. They didn't <laughs> die, but it wasn't their favorite thing in the so world. They all sort of locked up. So, yeah. Yeah. To, to make this a jamming uh, mm. device, we've actually made it uh, uh, listen to human musicians. So every performance that we do, we play, hopefully play with local musicians. Tonight we're playing with Rupert, who's actually a, a local musician. He's playing a piano. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take the, the audio from the piano and split it into eight frequency bands. And when his audio reaches and exits part of the frequency band, uh, it produces a trigger. And that from that trigger, we can attenuate it and then place it back into the network to uh, influence it, uh, the network through stimulation. The stimulation will influence the plasticity of the network, but also influence the sound spatialized around the space that you hear. So in effect, we're producing a, a jamming, semi-living jamming musician machine that is able to play with a, a human machine or a human, a human uh, musician. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, the, the interaction between the two is kind of like a jam session that you would have with two humans. Um, the, uh, uh, the stimulations going in, we can place it virtually anywhere in the dish uh, and influence uh, certain areas of the dish. And over time, we hope that the um, stimulations that are going into the, uh, the network actually affect the plasticity and, and uh, permanently change the network. Mm. Um, as we're sending the neuron signals, the, you know, they form new synapses as they're growing and they're, what we're sending them makes them change how they, how they grow, I suppose. So, so we're thinking yeah. maybe because these cells come from Guy Benari, they're taken from skin graft, reverse engineered to stem cells and then from those stem cells we've pushed them down the lineage of uh, uh, human brain neurons. Um, of course they're guys neurons really. Uh, we're trying to think of ways where if we place over long periods of time uh, place uh, guys neurons on the dish and pummel it with music that he doesn't like and see how the, 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 the network has changed depending on the music that we play it. But how, how difficult is to um, use this, this instru instrument or this innovative instrument? Uh, yeah. Is it, is it uh, controllable <laughs> like a uh, Eurorack? No, 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 no. You no. let it do what it does. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I think it's, 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 we'll just get out of the way. I think I'm taking a picture. But uh, um, it's, not, it's not a, a, a MIDI interface or anything like that. It's, mm. and it's, uh, it's definitely something that is generative. It produces a generative sound. And every artist that we've played with, a human musician, has always said it's kind of like playing with a, uh, a, an animal or somebody that is uh, not a machine and not a human, but somewhere in the middle where you can see that it's responding, but it's not responding in the predictable way that you expect. So there is response. So tonight at 8 o'clock, if, you, if you're here, you'll see the, the two jamming how they respond uh, to each other is, is, is up to them. <laughs> so it's not something random. It's, it's living not, inside. It's not random. It's, it's, mm. it's life inside. Yes. Yeah. We, we use the word neuronal noise. Scientists use neuronal noise because they don't have the vocabulary of what it is. Humans don't know what it is that these neurons do. We still are so basic in our knowledge of what this is. So. To say that it's noise means that we don't understand it. So yeah, it's like we use the word random for things we can't you know, calculate what's going on, so we just say it's random. It's a language. But, it is but a language. nothing's actually random. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Nothing at all. Nothing's random was, in this universe. What was the aim or the, the, um, the objective to create something like that? From where come this idea? Uh, it came from Guy and uh, Darren. And if I answered for them, I'd say basically the guy wanted to make a, uh, a um, neuronal network produce sound in a, in a live setting. So he wanted to produce a semi-living instrument. Um, Andrew and I came on later on in the piece. Uh, Andrew much earlier than me. So the, um, uh, our input was uh, mostly the physical things you see. The uh, impetus for the project was Guy and Darren. Um, Guy doing all the biological side of things. 
uh, me doing the physical fabrication and Andrew doing the electronics. So it was all, everyone had the speciality, I suppose, and the design, how it works. And how long do you work now on this project? It's over five years. Yeah. Yes. It's been a while. It's over five years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, do, we do other things as well. It's, it's not the only thing we do. And from where, where comes from this, this idea to make this uh, form factor or this, uh, this case? Or? Uh, I'm very much influenced by noise music. Uh, I myself am a noise, mu noise musician. Um, I'm interested in the history of noise music and, the, and, and noise in general. Uh, there's an artist, an Italian artist called Luigi Rosolo from the 30s. He produced these boxes called noise machines. And they're basically boxes that have hand cranks and they produce sound and they have big megaphones on the front. Uh, aesthetically, that's where it started, but also the, the device itself is. Um, a working lab so it needs to contain certain devices it has a sterile hood in the back where we can uh, feed the cells it has co2 uh, circuitry in the middle to produce and uh, room for fridges and all that sort of stuff so it needed to contain all these things but it also needed to be an artwork and um, the shape of it is indicative of what's actually happening at a microscopic level so we're taking the millivolts and we're amplifying them and producing a feedback machine so this black box pierces through the silver the lining, the smooth silver lining, and runs around in, an, an, in a cochlear kind of shape, like a megaphone kind of shape, and, and indicatively op opens out the sound for people to hear, and also takes it as a speaker through. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to kind of like this being a microphone that you sit in, the, in front of a speaker as like a feedback. So this is the genesis of the sound. <laughs> uh, uh, situated right into the middle of the production of the sound. Okay. And um, what? Um, how heavy is this entire thing? It's it's it's, it's bloody heavy. It's, <laughs> it looks extremely heavy and yeah. extremely big. Yes, it's all it's, it's in, all metal. And in the back is a very large uh, fan motor. And that alone is 100 kilos or something yes. stupid, isn't it? Yes. When it, when it's all boxed up, I think it's 900 kilos. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's the biggest and heaviest Eurorack model. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> heaviest, heaviest Eurorack. I Probably think. the biggest Eurorack case. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Oh well. <laughs> That's definitely. You have some other information or it's for you enough? Uh, do you have anything? Uh, no, I think we're probably um, covered it well. Where we, we can catch you after the Ars Electronica. Oh. You, we're you, in Slovenia in January, I think. We're going to Copernica Gallery, Slovenia. Uh, we have just uh, confirmed uh, um, a playing in Hague in Netherlands in September. Uh, I think we're next year, though. Yeah, next year, yeah. next September. And I think uh, we may be going to Norway soon. Who knows? Okay. That, that was May. <laughs> May, May. If that, Norway happens, May. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're going to keep this in Europe for the next twelve months at least. I think. After that, I'm not sure. Okay, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And nice. see you soon. Yes. And yeah. Have a good uh, other electronic. Thanks, Tom. All right. Nice to meet you.